In this demonstration, I will show you how you can sysprep a Windows 10 client. After sysprepping, you can use this VM as a base for cloning new VMs with specific configurations. Sysprep or system preparation prepares a Windows client or Windows Server installation for imaging. Sysprep can remove PC specific information from a Windows installation by generalizing so it can be installed on different PCs. In other words, once a system has been sysprep, the image of that system can be used on other computers to install configurations as it is. There are two types of boot configurations in sysprep. One called audit mode, the other one called out of box experience. The audit mode allow you to make additional changes to Windows installation before you send the computer to a customer or capture the image for reuse in your organization. You can install drivers including driver packages and install applications or make updates that require Windows installation to be running. The other option called out of box experience or OOBE. It is the default out of box experience that allows end user to enter their account information select language, accept Microsoft terms of service, and set up networking configurations. For typical type two hypervisor virtual machines installations, we only need to use the OOBE or out of box experience option. The goal of this process is to update the windows and remove any unwanted bloatware within the Windows operating system. So every single time we make a copy of this VM, it is a fresh install and there is no extra items within the operating system. The first thing you need to do, you need to update your Windows. Go to Start, go to Settings, and Update and Security. Make sure your Windows system is up to date. I have already ran the updates for this particular system. And the next thing we're going to do is we will go back to the settings menu and go to systems under about, take a note of the OS built version and the edition of your Microsoft um, Windows operating system and its version number. And then you can check this information against the Microsoft website to make sure this is the most up-to-date copy that you can get at the time of this system preparation. Once you have done that, you, will, you can close that window and you will notice on the start menu, you have a whole bunch of extra items that been added by Microsoft. Some of them you can remove simply by right-clicking and uninstalling. But it's going to take a long time if you keep doing that for uh, each one of these items. The other items appear on here, you cannot remove because they cannot be uninstalled uh, due to the way that it is being programmed onto the system, such as the Microsoft Store. What you can do in order to remove all of these items that are already built into the Microsoft Windows 10 you could run a third-party script to remove whatever you don't need. I'll be using a script called Microsoft Windows 10 Decrapifier. I will leave a link in the description to how to find that script. And it is currently being updated for Windows 11 and I'll make a video on that once it's available. Once you have downloaded that script, you can check what's within that script so that you can understand what it is doing. To do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the PowerShell ISE option. And once the Windows PowerShell ISE is opened, go to Files and then open your Microsoft Decrapifier script that you have downloaded. And on the file itself, it'll tell you some information in the comments and how to run this particular file. 
For example, if you just run with no switches, it will disable all unnecessary items and it will remove all unnecessary apps, except it will leave certain items that are considered as useful. There are other switches you can use right here. It will tell you what how to do it. And by going through each one of them, you can decide what needed to be taken out, what we you needed to keep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to run with the run the script with no switches on it. So it'll be just the default options. So I'll close that, and then I will open the PowerShell, the regular window. Not the ISE version, but just a Windows uh, Microsoft PowerShell, Windows PowerShell. But I will open that in administrative privileges. So press run as administrator. And in the user account control, click yes. And now you are running the PowerShell in the administrator privilege. Then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate to my desktop. So that would be CD, C users, Sanuja slash desktop. And if I go LS, which will list all the items on the desktop, it'll, sh it'll have that PowerShell script, the Windows 10 decrapifier script. Perfect. Now the next step is we need to make sure that I have execution permission sets. So to set the execution permission policy, what we're going to do, we're going to type set dash execution policy. And we're going to type unrestricted and press enter. Oops, sorry. Uh, so it should be execution policy unrestricted, right? That make sure your spelling is correct so you won't get that error message and press enter. And it's going to ask you, hey, you know, you will be giving this, you know, change, making this change, and it actually going to, it could actually harm your computer. But we know what we are doing, so we're going to say yes. So to press yes, either press Y or A and press Enter. Now we have set the permissions. Let's run the script. To run the script, uh, we know the script name is Windows 10 underscore decrapifier.ps1 in my case. So I'm going to type Windows 10 uh, PS1 and basically the file name of the script and press Enter. and it will run uh, and remove any unwanted apps that it recognize. It will come back with some errors sometimes. Uh, this is expected because Microsoft keep changing certain items, but it will remove most of the things that you need to get rid of. There you go. So as I mentioned, it sometimes does come back with some few errors, but it's okay. So now the script has been run and uh, everything is done. We can close this uh, PowerShell window. And if you go to your start menu, see lots of items are gone now. So that because of that script has uninstalled all these junk items that you don't need. Again, you will see some additional items that you don't want to have it on your image which you can now remove once you ran the script. For example, this one I can remove. Let's see this one, yeah. So I'm gonna remove Prime, I'm gonna remove this one, Spotify, and I'm gonna uninstall Microsoft News, Disney Plus, whatever you wanna remove. Now, there are certain items I didn't remove, like for example, uh, Microsoft Store, which can be removed if you go to the script uh, uh, if you go editing to the script with the ISC, you'll see there are options, there are switches in here where you can actually remove all apps, including Microsoft Store, which I didn't run. Uh, it is possible, so just read the 
top instructions in this script it will tell you what you can do with it so now everything that i need to be removed uh, i would like to get removed is now removed uh, and it is a fresh new copy what we're going to do next is to actually run the sysprep so to run the sysprep what i'm going to do i'm going to go to start and type run and you'll open up the run command and just type sysprep s y s p r e p sysprep and click ok it will open up the folder that containing sysprep within the system 32 and you will see the sysprep application here right click and click on run as administrator and you will get this window for sysprep tool under system cleanup action select the enter system out of the box experience remember at the beginning of the video i explained what is the system audit mode but we are not going to do that we're going to go with the system out of the box experience and then instead of reboot select shutdown and it is very important you also click the option that says generalize what the generalize does is every single time when the windows get installed onto a computer it has certain identification values like GIDs, GUIDs, like uh, the basic ID, UIDs. That those identification numbers are very unique to each computer install, each installation. So if you keep copying same operating system, same VM without generalizing it, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with multiple VMs with the exact same ID. And then when you put them into a single network, or put them into a single Active Directory domain controller, it will create conflicts because it's now the network and the Active Directory domain get confused between different computers, which usually result in auto reboots and uh, basically uh, the win devices not being able to connect to the domain. So make sure you select generalize, out of the box experience, and the shutdown as the option not reboot not quit just shut down and click ok and after a few minutes it should automatically shut itself down perfect so now you will end up with the vm that has been sysprepped. I have conveniently named that machine as Win 10 X64 sysprep, but you can name whatever you like. Make sure that it is easy to identify. Sometimes I name it as Windows 10 X64 uh, base file or whatever you want to call it. And how you're going to make a new machine is basically on your VMware workstation which which is what I'm using. You're gonna right click, you're gonna go to snapshots, under snapshot manager, select clone and click next. And you will have the only option available which is the current state of the virtual machine, click next. And instead of going for a link clone, I would recommend that you'll go, you go with the full clone. The difference between a link clone and a full clone is basically link clone use less resources, such as the hard drive space. However, if you accidentally turn this sysprep machine on, all your other machines that is linked to that sysprep may get corrupted. So my recommendation is always choose create a full clone and then click next. And I'm just simply gonna call this a clone of um, Windows 10 sysprep machine just for the demonstration purposes. And you can see under location, it is actually creating a brand new VM and we're gonna click finish.
So what the cloning has done is basically take a copy of this file, which we have sysprepped, and put those VM files into a new VM and created a new folder for it. So once you're done, just close it. So you'll end up with that new VM called clone of, uh, or whatever you want, you called it. Now, what we're gonna do, we will boot this thing up and I will show you what happened. Remember how we picked the generalized out of the box experience? So when you boot up the new VM that has been cloned from that sysprep machine, you will get the setup process. So basically it's a basic window setup process, just go through them. So once the window setup process is done on the new VM, if you go to your start menu, you will see that all the unwanted apps are now gone because we clone this VM from our sysprep VM, which has already been properly sysprepped and all the unwanted apps has been removed. And if you go to your settings and if you go to system and if you check the about section, you will see for this particular Windows 10 Pro, the version and the OS build is same as the clone VM. And you basically have a very clean install based on the pre-prepared uh, pre, uh, pre, pre VM that we created just a few minutes ago. This would make it much easier for you to create future VMs as all the preparation work has been done. One thing I should, however, mention is that as Windows updates get rolled in, you will have to update your new VM or you can actually update your base sysprepped VM and use that to create the new VMs in the future, especially when there are new Windows updates that is not available today, but become available in the future. But if you are going to do that, you need to make sure you do not have any linked clone. You only have independent clone of your sysprep VM. If you have linked clone, do not turn on that sysprep VM and try to update it because it will destroy all the VMs that use that clone as a link clone to build. And that's everything. And that's how you use sysprepper VM to be used for cloning. Until next time, have a nice day. And please subscribe and thumbs up. Thank you.